Okay, today we're going to talk about symmetry in the plane and space. Uh, Joseph, can you read this for us? We're going to define for you what we mean by symmetry in a plane. Symmetry in the plane and the space. A figure in the plane has symmetry if there is an isometry other than the identity that maps the figure onto itself. Because such an isometry a symmetry of the figure. Okay. All right, so take a look at this here. Chris, won't you read the rest? So here's the, uh huh. So if the figures below have line symmetry, this means that for each figure there's a symmetry line K, such that the reflection RK maps the figure onto itself. The pentagon at the left has one symmetry line. The regular pentagon at the right has five symmetry As you can see, uh, you see how these lines, line of symmetry, right, maps on, right, when you were to reflect it, it will map onto itself, right? So that's what a symmetry is. And in this case, the first, the figure on the left has one line of symmetry. The figure on the right, how many line of symmetry does it have? Uh, it has, how many? I believe it has five, five, right? So you can't count them on the, so here's one, two, three, four, five, okay? So it's got five line of symmetry, okay? Um, do you think we have to have line of symmetry? Could you have point of symmetry? Is it possible to have point of symmetry? Yeah. Actually, in this case, yeah, this one on the right, it has point of symmetry as well, not only the line of symmetry. So let's read this. Who wants to read this for us? Pretty straightforward. Uh, how about... Pac-Man! Uh, go ahead, Daniel. That's right. But actually, I said it wrong. Does it have a point of symmetry? No. The one on the top? Why not? It looks like it might have it. Uh, but how are they defining point of symmetry? It has to have? Half turn. Yeah, when you do half turn, it's got. So if I were to do like some angle, yeah, uh, it, it can't be like any angles. It has to be 180 degrees, right? When you do a half turn, then. So it turns out this one, I said it wrong. It doesn't have a point of symmetry, does it? But once on the bottom here, they do, okay? As you can see, if you were to do a half turn around O, right, all three figures down here will map onto itself. Does that make sense? So again, does this figure have a uh, point of symmetry? No. Okay, please be careful. I said it wrong. So point of symmetry, you got to remember uh, that it has got to be half turn. So write that down. Don't make that mistake as I did. Write that down. I'll wait. Okay. So if it has a point of symmetry, uh, it's going to have, it's going to have to have half turn that maps onto itself. Write this down. So, uh, I claim that one of these figures has actually not only point of symmetry, but it does have line of symmetry. Anybody see which one of these figures has a line of symmetry? Abel? The one in the middle. That's right. And how many line of symmetry does it have, class? Two. Two is correct. Okay, so it has the one in the middle. Not only does it have a point of symmetry, right? It's got a line of symmetry. If you were to right, draw a vertical line, right, on O, right, that would be a line of symmetry, and then also a horizontal line. Okay? Oh, no. Would that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. There's some other symmetry called rotational symmetry. Okay, so. Uh, I'm sorry? No, let's read this first. Abel, why don't you read this for us? Besides. Besides having a symmetry point, the middle figure above has a vertical symmetry line and a horizontal sym symmetry line. Yeah, that's what we just talked about. Go ahead. Huh? A third kind of symmetry is rotational symmetry. The figure below has the four rotational symmetries listed. Each symmetry has center O and rotates the figure onto itself. Mm -hmm. Note that 180 degree rotational symmetry is another name for point symmetry. Good. So as you can see, uh, you can see that you know, multiples of 90 degrees, right, will get you a rotational symmetry around point O. Would you not agree? So if you were to rotate this 90 degrees, right, this, let's just look at this. this you know, the whole thing, actually. The whole thing will map onto itself, as you can see. Does that make sense? So it's got rotational symmetry of 90 degrees, 180 degrees rotational symmetry, which is the same as T? Uh, same as what? Point symmetry, good, as, as a half turn, and then 20, 270 rotational symmetry and 360. Easy enough? Okay, so so far we talked about line, of symmetry, line symmetry, point symmetry, and rotational symmetry. Okay, Do they always, does it always have to be 90 degrees then? No, of course not. It depends on what kind of figures you have. All right, uh, let's move on to the last one here. Emily, can you read this for us? The identity mapping. The identity mapping always maps a figure onto itself. We usually improve the identity with the symmetry of the figure. 
However, we do not call a figure symmetric if the identity is statistically Okay, so that's important. Write that down. If you have, so identity mapping. In this case, which one of these is the identity mapping? Rotation of 360, right? But if the figure has, if that's the only, uh, if, if that's the only uh, symmetries it has, we don't say that it has a symmetry. So identity mapping always maps the figure onto itself, right? Uh, and we usually include that, but we do not call the figure symmetric, okay? If the identity is the only uh, symmetry it has. Does that make sense? So please keep that in mind. So I could ask you, does this, it, is this figure symmetrical? You say yes or no, right? If the only symmetry it has is the identity, then it's not, okay? So please keep that in mind, write that down. Okay, so those aren't the only uh, symmetries we could have. We could also have a translational symmetry. Somebody read this for us. Uh, how about Darius? A figure can also have translational symmetry if there's a translation that maps the figure onto itself. Mm -hmm. And for you example, may... Oh, yeah, good. Uh, so you may think, well, wait a minute. If you move uh, some things onto the right, how is it going to map right everything onto itself? Because it's going to move. So, for example, they give us this picture. Fish. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, so if you were to move this, okay, so just let's take a look at the uh, eye of this fish. If you were to move this onto the right, this unit, right, is this mapping onto itself? Yeah. What about this part? It's going to be blank and this part is going to be, there's going to be more fish on the right side. You see what I mean? But you got to be careful when you, when you read this. Uh, somebody, Darius, keep reading. For example. For example, imagine that the design at the right extends in all directions to fill the plane. Okay, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the part that you got to understand. Imagine that this, is, this design, right, expands, extends all directions. If it did, then of course you can move right, one unit to the right, or you could actually move this down this way, right, it'll map onto itself, right, if you imagine this is going to go on forever. Does that make sense? Okay, so if it didn't, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, keep reading. If you consider the distance between the eyes of the adjacent blue fish as a unit, then a translation through one or more units left, right, up, or down maps the whole pattern onto itself. Mm -hmm. Do you see that you can also translate the pattern along diagonal lines? Would it work as a diagonal line? Yeah, yeah. so you could go from this one to the one right here, right? It'll still map onto itself. As long as it is, um, as long as it's, right, expanding forever. Okay. Did you say line? Line reflection. Line reflection, okay, so we're gonna get, actually, Joseph, you're right. Uh, keep, can you read this for us? So when you do when you do diagonal, go ahead. It is also. It is also possible to map the blue fish with all face to the left on the right face to blue fish by translating the whole pattern of half unit up and reflecting it in a vertical line. Thus, if we ignore color difference, the pattern line is line reflecting symmetry. So as you can see, if we didn't have any color, right, you could actually do a glide reflection. Does that make sense? So I could, how would I do that? Well, I could move this fish uh, down, like right here, and then reflect it or something, right? And as you can see, it'll map onto itself. Does, do you see how the glide reflection work? Yes? If, if you ignore the color difference. Okay, any, yeah, any question? So you could glide this down over and then just reflect it on, on, along this line, right? As you can see, it will map onto itself exactly, okay? All right, so let's move on. And then there are some other designs. Okay, here we go. Design like this pattern of fish. Uh, Chris, can you read this for us? A design like this pattern of fish in which congruent copies of the figures from two to fill the plane without overlapping is called a tessellation. Mm -hmm. Tessellations can have any of the kinds of symmetry we have discussed. Here are two more examples. So these are called tessellations, okay? So um, designs like the pattern of fish or these, right? You see how uh, congruent copies of figure completely fill the plane, right? Without overlap, okay? Okay, so, uh, so let's look at this one on the left. Tessellation of the letter F. This pattern has point symmetry and translational symmetry. How does it have a translational symmetry? Anybody see how it's gonna be translational? Yes? Because like the, some pieces of the, of the puzzle are like 
you see that same piece in a different position mm -hmm. in different parts of the plane. Mm -hmm. So it says it has to, so let's look at the point symmetry. Point symmetry basically means half turn, right? Where would how where would the point be then? Yeah, right in the middle, right here. If you have a point right in the middle, if you do half turn, you see how it's going to map onto itself? Do you see that? Right here, this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then what about, uh, they say it also has uh, translational symmetry. As you can see, you see how this F right here? Right? Yeah. If we were to move this down onto this one right down here or something, right? And of course, if this fills the whole plane, right? It doesn't, uh, right? it's got to go on forever. If it didn't, it doesn't make any sense for translational. All right, this one, uh, this translation has line, point, rotational, translational, and glide reflection. Everything that we talked about. Do you see all those? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I want you to think as a team as to how you see. Tell me where all these, see if you understand why it has everything. Go ahead, everybody, everybody talk as a team. How, how does it have a line, point, rotational, translational, and glide? Okay, reflection. Go ahead, everybody think about it. How does that work? So one thing that you got to remember again is if you see this uh, figure on the right side right here, you have to kind of imagine this is going forever, right? It's expanding forever. If it didn't, it doesn't make any sense, right? But if it did, you see how you would have a line, point, rotational, and translation, and glide reflection? Do you, are you all convinced that it has all those? Yeah. So that makes sense. It's important to see all those. All right, here we go then. Let's move on. Okay, uh, Nina, Nina, can you read this for us? Coloring. Coloring and tessellation often changes the symmetries. For example, if the green were removed from the tessellation of the letter N, the pattern would also have 90 degrees and 270 degree rotational symmetry. Good, so as you can see, if, if, the, if we uh, get rid of the uh, green uh, color, right, it will have uh, rotational uh, symmetry of 90 and 270. Would you agree? Uh, how come they don't mention uh, 180 degrees rotational symmetry on this one? Doesn't it have that also? Because, it, it, because the green and green, green F and Y and F is not the same. No, here. it's because point symmetry and 180 is the same. Correct. We, they already told us. We have a point symmetry, right? So it does have a uh, point symmetry, which is rotation of 180. Does that make sense? And of course, they could have said it has uh, 360 rotation also, right? That's the uh, identity mapping. All right. Okay. Uh, Nora, can you read this for us? A figure in space has, okay, plane symmetry now. We're going to go now talk about the last one, plane symmetry. Go ahead. A figure in space has plane symmetry. If there is a symmetry, plane X such that reflection in the plane maps the figure onto itself. Mm -hmm. Most, living. Most living creatures have a single plane of symmetry. Such, such symmetry is called bilateral symmetry. The photograph on the next plane illustrates bilateral symmetry. Okay, so... Uh, if it has single plane symmetry, it's called bilateral, right? Uh, if it doesn't have single symmetry, it's not called bilateral, okay? Uh, why do they say most living thing has uh, bilateral symmetry? By the way, as you can see, as we talk about plane symmetry, we're now going to which dimension of space? Three-dimensional Three space. Does that make sense? So, so far, up to, up to here, right? Uh, line symmetry point, rotational, translational, and glide reflection. So, I was talking about two-dimensional. Two now, we're jumping into three. So, for example, um, can somebody think about why they say that most living things have single plane symmetry called bilateral symmetry? How does a plane, if you were to uh, reflect that on plane, it will map onto itself? Bilateral symmetry. Yeah, for example, here, so here's a picture. Take a look at this butterfly. How come this butterfly has bilateral symmetry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joseph. Green has one. It only needs one, one. What plane? Where would the plane go through then? Uh, there is the thin, thin body. Yeah. So is is it going to go like this way to the left and right? Like this? No. It's going to go this way, right? Yeah. As you can see, as the plane goes through the very center this way, from right, the center. You see, the left side would map exactly to the right side, right? It will map onto itself. Does that make sense? And so does this tiger, whatever, right? <laughs> Actually, whatever. yeah. They sh they should have. Because if the body is on the right side, it should actually go through, you know, through the body and so on. Right? Oh, Does that make sense? That's, I feel sad for yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here, let's, let's not talk about animals. Here, uh, take a look at this. Somebody read this. How about some uh, geometric solids? Uh, how about, who wants, Therese, can you read this for us?
Do you see how it's going to have a, uh, how many plane symmetry would it have? Seven. 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 Okay, it's going to have seven plane symmetry, right? As you can see, if you were to reflect on that plane, it will map onto yourself. And it also has uh, six uh, rotational symmetries, right? 60 degrees each, multiples of 60 degrees. Do you see that? Yes. If it has only one, again, uh, plane symmetry, what's it called? Bilateral. Bilateral symmetry. Any question? Pretty straightforward? Yeah. Okay. Can you do something like this for your homework tonight? Yes. Good.